Welcome everyone to week two of Crossroads Football Live and I'm Max Williams. I'm Zach Brown and we were at Memorial Stadium mm -hmm. for our game of the week between Victoria East and Victoria West. Let's go on and go out to Memorial Stadium right now where it was the West Warriors trying to take back what they felt was theirs after losing that boot and the East Titans trying to defend it after winning it back last year. The first play of the game picked off. They pick off Dominic Martinez to start things off and they cap it off with this short touchdown to Braylon Vasquez. It's an early 7-0 lead, but hey, after disaster for the West Warriors on the ensuing kickoff, they had the ball at the 10-yard line. All they did was go 90 yards down the field, cap capped off by that Genesis touchdown, and he would get a second one, leaping into the end zone. It's 14-7 Victoria West, and boy, in the second quarter, they would really punt or, or pour it on the East Titans. Dominic Martinez, 21-7. Victoria West Warriors and they would force a quick turnover with a minute to go in the first half. Dominic Martinez able to punch it home yet again at the half. It was 28 to 7. Now the East Titans did make a run of things, but it came up short. The Victoria wow. East Titans fall. Final score 41 28. The West Warriors win that boot for the first time, well, I say for the first time, <laughs> they get it back to where they feel like it belongs after East won it for the first time since 2019. I was gonna say, Zach, that was a great game. We, we were both kind of there watching it. I mean, when you see rivalry football, Zach, I mean, Battle of the Boot, it just, no, nothing gets better. You can that. throw the records out the window whenever these two get together. I thought it was over at the half, but the Victoria East Titans made a run at it. Couldn't quite pull it out. They are down their starting quarterback, but we'll see if they can regroup. It's yeah, non-district exactly. play. If there's a time to take your lumps, it's certainly now. So good luck to the East Titans as they look to mm -hmm. regroup here. The Victoria West Warriors, though, 2-0 and oh oh. under head coach Courtney Boyce. By the way, congratulations, Dominic Martinez, your yeah. MVP Ooh. of the football game as that boot goes back to West. And now... Yeah, I mean, Zach, I mean, we talk about a great game, but what about over in Luis, right? The Bloomington Bobcats have played in Luis again early. The Hornets, right? Both teams back in week one. I mean, we looked at it. This was an exciting game between both sides. Running back Aiden Gardner runs it in, and guess what? He puts the Bobcats up 6-0, to zero, right? But here's the situation with this game, Zach. You want to know about a fun score? 8-6 to six at the end. Luis won. 8-6? to six? I mean, that's you don't see because that has to be, like I said, maybe they got two, got the two-point conversion. How, what? One of our reporters, Ray Mosey, went to that game. When mm. I told him that it was going to be a low-scoring football game, it was a great matchup. You want to talk about playoff football, doesn't get a whole lot more defense. nerve. Defense. Defense, defense wins championships. You know yeah. if, if, if defense tells us anything, it's going to be Bloomington and Luis playing for a state championship, man. Ooh, hey, I mean, <laughs> hey, we'll have to see about that. Yeah, so really, I don't, I don't I know. Mean, we look at it again for Luis. East, all right, and Bloomington, right? Their next opponents coming up in this kind of series. We got for Bloomington, they're gonna play Ben Bolt, their first home game, right, Zach? But then for Luis, they play Hallettsville Sacred Heart. So again, maybe a little different opponents there for both squads. And so, Zach, again, we kind of mentioned just a couple of teams, but we're gonna actually take a break here for both sides. When we come back, we're gonna get highlights again from Hallettsville, St. Joseph, and a lot of other teams. We'll be right back here on Crossroads Football Live.
All right, welcome back everyone. And we just talked about again, Battle of the Blue was a huge game, obviously for both teams. And obviously we had Yoakum Industrial. We'll hear from Ray Robinson later as he's live there at the stadium for the Cobra Stadium. So we'll get to that. But you know, now we're gonna transition over there. Oh, well, we got a little bit of uh, some highlights actually here for Yoakum Industrial right now. Again, we look at this game. I think Zach, we look at it. This team went back and forth, right? For the Oakland Bulldogs, right? They scored there on their first possession of the game. And how about that? It's about 732 left to go in the first quarter. Donovan Tucson, he leads the Bulldogs on a 50 yard drive. He scored a touchdown, second and goal that was. And after capitalizing right on a fumble there with five minutes, the Cobras, they had a chance. They bounced back. They run it down the field, ending in a touchdown there from number five, Nick Schuler. And man, this game, I mean, is exciting right now between Yoakum and industrial right now. See if we can get a score here, possibly for this one. Uh, we're gonna maybe wait here, possibly for it a little bit here. So yeah, look at the highlights though, Zach. I mean, this is another one for industrial, right? This team, they had a heartbreaking loss to Edna. So mm -hmm. what I mean, look at this team here for industrial. Like how is, what is their way to respond, obviously, from this game at the Oakland? If I saw anything from industrial last year, they are one of the scrappiest teams in the crossroads. I've seen them down by three touchdowns before. They came all the way back mm -hmm. to tie it up or come within one possession. Yeah. They are never, ever down mm -hmm. and out with head coach Craig Nair <laughs> leading the way. So they may have lost, but I'll tell you what, they're going to bounce right back. It's exactly. non-district football like we talk well, about. Doesn't mean the games aren't important, <laughs> but they do not count towards the postseason. True. And that's the most important part. I think industrial is going to be ready if, come postseason time. struggle, struggle early, right? Yeah. That's the key. And then you want to try to keep going overall and then work with it. But... I mean, Zach, I mean, we look at this for both teams here. I think it's going to be exciting going on. And so we're going to get the full screen now here for it. Look at that, Zach. Industrial 42-38. Oh, did the they come back? There. Oh, look at that. I I'm surprised here, too. It looked like for a second, Yoakum had the lead there. <laughs> I think you and me are shocked seeing the score as we see it. I mean, it's still in the fourth right now, Zach. But, hey, high-scoring game, I think, between both of these teams. I told you they were one of the scrappiest teams in the crossroads. I thought they were <laughs> down and out. <laughs> yeah, I thought they were it. done for. But Industrial <laughs> squeezing out the victory, 42-38. to 38. Wow. That's a tough one right mm, there over a sure. very good Yoakum Bulldog team, but how about another very good team? The Ganado Indians, they actually had their homecoming this week against the Bowling Bulldogs. Ganado started the fourth or the first quarter with the ball. They had a blocked punt. It put the Bowling Bulldogs on the goal line. Bowling, Caden Lunford gets the interception from the Indians. Khaled Hajowski, the Indians had the ball inside their own 10 yard line. Indians quarterback number 15, Landon Ariata, Ariaga. Drops back for a pass, a completion to number seven, Austin Pena, who dodges some defenders to speed into the end zone for the Indians. First touchdown of the night. Bowling now had the ball in their own 27. They had a completion for 20 yards. Bowling slowly made their way down the field to score. Ganado, though, able to connect again to Austin Pena. Did Ganado able to start the year off 2-0? We'll see. Maybe we got a we got a score possibly coming up here for Ganado over Bowling. But I guess why for a second while we wait, Zach. I mean for Ganado, right? That was your team. We've talked about it with this team in Ganado. So like when we look at I'm not it, right? cheering for them. I just think they're going to win a state championship. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Make though, it Ganado. clear, dude. All these people. Like, you hate my city. You hate my school. No, I don't. <laughs> Give me a break here. That's what I'm Give me a break you here. You like all the teams here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we respect everyone that is around here here in the Crossroads area. But I mean, Zach, we look at it here. Um, um, we're going to try to see if we get that score, but if we get out here, we're going to come back here. We're going to cover again some more highlights here. We'll obviously get something maybe from Ray Robinson again with Yoakum Industrial. Stay tuned here on Crossroads Football Live. We'll be right back.
Here at Crossroads Football Live and Zach, we're going to move our attention here. To class 2A with the Furio Bobcats. They were playing the London Pirates tonight. And this week again for Furio, they're hoping to get back on track again as they play Edna in a huge showdown next week. Right, Zach? Again, on the opening drive, quarterback Heathen Brown hands it off to Ray Lewis. But then he fumbles again on, it looks like, the yard line. Got excited. Here we go. Here's the play coming up here on the 15-yard line. But London, they recover it, Zach. And look at this. I mean, it's just incredible. But if you look at this team, the later would return it here for this team. London, they're on again a very, again, next play on the game. It was at the 10-yard line. And it made, again, a very long touchdown pass to Jeremiah again. Lettuce and London is up to, again. 7-0 against Refurio on the 25-yard line. And Brown, he hands it off again to Ray Lewis, who again, who fumbles on the previous drive, right? And then comes back and then runs it back for a touch. So a little bit of revenge right there on that play for, again, Lewis. And then London, though, again, against their goal line. Refurio is going to, again, tackles, making the play in the end zone for a safety. A safety, Zach, in the end zone. How about <laughs> defense? defense? Make him some plays, defense right? So Refurio gets up 9-7. At Furio with the ball again, do again the safety at the 17 yard line and Brown, he hands it off again to Jordan King. An outstanding running back, breaks loose and for a touchdown, Refurio up 16 to seven. And again, Refurio, they were just in the end zone a lot, Zach. He Brown hands it off again to Xander Willis and he runs it in for the touchdown. And man, Refurio, you see the trend here, Zach? A 30 to seven, again, back there, the 20 yard line. Brown, another handoff, right? Surprise there to Jordan King, again, for a very, very long touchdown run. And let's look at the score, Zach, 64 to seven. Refurio keeping it going with their dominance over London. And again, they had that huge showdown against Edna next week. That's gonna be, I think, a big time game, but they're not messing around with Refurio right now. I get bored covering Refurio games. It's hard to go out there when they beat everybody by about 70 points. But next week against Edna is gonna be one of the best showdowns of the year. I don't know if you guys remember the last year's crazy game. Next week gonna be just as wild. By the way, Edna, another huge win tonight. We'll get to that later on this evening. Now, Cuero is trying to rebound versus the Lavernia Bears after losing badly to the Columbus Cardinals. Next week, they have a tough challenge against Yoakum, but for this week, Cuero in the red zone early. It is Jackson Marie, hands it off to Jace Gomez, short touchdown run. He's hard to stop, Cuero up, seven, nothing early, but this is a very tough team in Lavernia. They're going to respond in the red zone themselves. Keegan Hadjik throws a beautiful pass to Logan Mayton. That's a touchdown pass, and that's a tie game, 7-7. Now on the next drive, Cuero on the Lavernia 25-yard line, third and 12. You got no choice but to throw. And Jackson Marie throws a wow. touchdown. That's a Walker dart. deep. Cuero a 14-7 Lavernia in the red zone after that one. They were able to score. It was a close back and forth ball game all night. The Cuero Gobblers get the victory. Final score 35 to 28. All right, Zach. Well, now let's head over to El Campo, right? The Rice Birds, they travel to Brian Rutter for the game against the Rangers. Again, this again for El Campo, this was a big time game for both teams in a battle. And man, for Rudder Rangers, here's the Gary go. Look at this run here from senior running back here again. Again, Darian Holmes. Looks like he's going all, all the way for the score. Big time run there for El Campo. And again, they got a big win there going on. And we're gonna get the score update here. Actually, tough one there, Zach. Looked like they were gonna go here. Then it was 21 there, 17. Rudder for the win overall. For sure, but we've got a special guest when we come back. The Victoria ISD Athletic Director will be right back.
Welcome back, everybody here. We go with our guest here again, VSD Athletic Director Spencer Gannett. And man, what a game tonight. We talked about the Battle of the Boot earlier. So what is this game between Torrey East and West? Just me for the community overall. Oh, it's, you, were, you, were, you guys were there tonight. You saw the crowd. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, both teams have a great fan base. We've got great coaching staffs, great kids. They've been playing against each other since youth football. And, and to, to culminate in a varsity football game uh, was just absolutely amazing. It, it was, I was glad to be a part of that. And absolutely. Just what, what were your thoughts about just like overall the game? Just like I said, I mean, it was a great game overall, but like, what is this like, you know, because this has been going on for a while. Usually they usually play at the end of sure. the year. So what did it feel like playing like maybe the second game overall? Um, you know, at, at the end of the year, it's, it's always tough because uh, most of the year is the build up getting to the game. So, so playing it right off the bat was kind of good for me because there, there wasn't as much build up <laughs> and, and we can get that one out of the way and those guys can focus sure. on, on their district play. So, um, but no, it's, it's really neat. It's amazing to get everybody in the stadium like that. All right, Coach, quick couple questions. Thank you very yes, much there thank you. for being on the show. Now again, we're going to be back here. We're going to have the quick of scores and updates when we come back here on Crossroads Football Live. This portion of Crossroads Football Live is brought to you by Frost Bank. Exactly what you unexpected. Oh man, what a week two for football. Absolutely. We thought Zach. Industrial pulled it out. Actually, Yoakum pulled wow. it out. Final score we 45 wrong. to 42. <laughs> we were wrong. We'll get it right next week, Max. I hope so. I mean, that was that was awesome there, Zach. But hey, what a great week two of high school football. Again, 